one more applause for the worship team, please. Thank you guys so much. Uh, they pulled off a miracle because I asked for a song that we just sang, God Really Loves Us. We're going to go to that, back to that song later because I feel so strong about that message in that song. And I'm just, if you guys, you shouldn't be watching me during worship, but if you happen to see me in the front, like, I just go all out with that song because that song has been speaking to me a lot for the last, I don't know, year because it's kind of, it's kind of easier to know that God is really loving me when my wife and kids are not with me. Uh, so first, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Ardo. Uh, my full name is Bernardo Yudo Wibo Okaro Di Maggio, but you don't have to memorize that. Uh, I am Javan I'm Javanese Manadonese, jadi orang Indonesia aslinya. Uh, a lot of people think I'm from, I don't know, Turkey, Mexico, like all sorts of stuff. But saya orang Indonesia, maka tipis Indonesia. Uh, but I'm just so, so happy to be here. You guys have no idea. Uh, and when, when uh, Arnold would introduce me as like his, his like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually his doppelganger. He's like, every, he has the best genes, more handsome, sings better. I don't know how he stays single, but like, I, got, I, got luck, I got lucky. I got lucky. Thankfully, you know, Sarah met me before he met her, him. So then like, I'm like, no, no, look at me, babe. Look at me. <laughs> He's handsome. <laughs> He's hot, but look at me, babe. Um, so, yeah. My, anyways, I just want to welcome you. This is your first time to ICC. Um, it's also my first time here, funny thing. Uh, but I think it's just good uh, courtesy for a speaker to acknowledge the ones who, who are here for the very first time. It is such a special time to be in this church because I know Pastor Don Butera. Like, he's just an amazing mentor, amazing leader. He's not here, which is why I'm here. Uh, but there's nothing that he wants more than to be here with you. So if you're the first time here, there's an actual real senior pastor uh, for, for ICC. I have Jeff, it's Pastor Jess, and I got to hear her speak from last service. So if you speak Bahasa, you should join the first service today at 8.30. Really exciting stuff. Bagi yang, you know, yang masih belajar Bahasa Indonesia, it's a good time for you to practice your Bahasa Indonesia, right? So just, I love this collaboration between ICC, IFGF, Bali. It's an amazing time to be here in Bali. So I just want to say how much I'm grateful to be here. I want to give a quick shout out to Pastor Jess and today Pastor Victor. My goodness, man, this, I knew him like since 2013 and like I just knew. Can we give him more applause? Because today he dedicated JB, uh, his, his son, three weeks there. Three weeks Three weeks and just three weeks, man, giving, um, dedicating him to the Lord. So I'm congratulating both Pastor Victor and Dondra as well. So happy for you guys. Uh, I've, I've, I've dedicated both my kids already, and I can't wait to teach him, uh, teach them more about who the Lord is. Uh, quick shout out to Priska. Finally, that's you, right? Is that you, Priska? Yeah, we've been we've been talking on WhatsApp. It's like I don't know you, but just nice to meet you. And Natalie, I think is here. Is Natalie here? Are you here? No, she's not here. Okay, good. Uh, just, I just want to say hi to them, but of course, of course, old friends are the best friends, right? Like you can't, you can't make old, you can't make old friends. You just got to be with them. You just got to remember them. You just got to, you know, be around them. So, you know, it was great to meet Arnold again, Ariel, Putra, Joe, Daniel, and Rachel. And it was just so exciting for me to be here. I feel like I'm coming back home just to like visit you guys. So thank you so much for welcoming me. Anyways, enough about me. Let's get to the word of God today. I'm very excited because the reason why the part in the song of God Really Loves Us that, that speaks to me the most was the part at the bridge that says, what a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. And I just remember as I'm, I'm just praying and reflecting how can I you know, what, what God has been speaking to me about. So when Pastor Don asked me to speak, I'm like, oh, man, I haven't been preaching in a while. Uh, but so now I'm, uh, I need to, like, <laughs> what, is, what has been resonating in my heart? And I can't think of anything else but this song, but also the text we're going to talk about today. If you know this story, it's in Luke 15. So if you open up your Bibles, you can go to Luke 15. We're going to look at this story together. But before we go to the story, the famous story of the prodigal son, we have to look at the full chapter starting from verse 1. Because we will see there that verse, starting from verse 1 to 10, there's a whole context on why this famous story is going to be in, I believe, in verse 11. So if you're, if you're a Christian, if you're Christian, you know the story very much. In, in fact, this is so famous, even, you know, uh, non-Christians know the story, right? The prodigal son. We're going to look at the story 
And we're going to see what we can draw out together, and I'm hoping that we can spend time to pray and to really dig deep into what does it mean that he is our father. But before we go to uh, verse 11, we're going to go to uh, verse 1 to 10, because it gives a context on why Jesus even uh, talked about, he even talked about this. Oh, yeah. Is there a picture of my family? I forgot to talk about my family. Is there a picture of my family? I'm too excited. Okay, there you go. There you go. That's Sarah, my better half. And then there's my two kids. There's Ruby and AJ. Uh, why AJ? I don't think I'm again, but AJ stands for Ardo Jr. <laughs> no joke. So, like, I can't wait when he grows up realizing that his name is an acronym. And then, like, Ardo, Ardo Jr., am I named after you? And I'm like, yes, son. You know, so he hasn't, he hasn't gone there yet, but I can't wait to let him know. Yeah, so his name is Ardo Jr. Actually, his full name is Bernardo Walter Peter, uh, which is my name, my dad's name, and Sarah's dad's name. Yeah, no pressure at all, you know. Just to be like your da dad, the best of all the males in your life, no pressure at all. We could talk about that next time if you invite me back. Okay. Verse 1. The tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach, right? That's what Jesus does, what he does. And so other people want to listen to him teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. Now, if you don't know already, Jesus is all about wokeness. And I don't mean to say that in a political sense. He, he makes people nervous. That's what he does. If Jesus doesn't make you nervous, you're not listening to his story. Because he is loving people that are unloving. He's hanging out with people that you should not be hanging out with. And I'm not saying may we all go to the red district in, I don't know where the red, red light district in Bali is. I don't, I'm not going to ask and I'm not going to ask you to search for it. But the point is, he, you might find Jesus there not, a, not, not like doing what they're doing. But he's listening to them. He is teaching them that there is a way to God. That you don't have to live that way. And if you follow me, you may find life. And so Jesus, it, his job is to make us nervous. Why? Because sometimes our faith in him becomes a religion. And that's a problem. Because his movement was never a religion. His movement was a lifestyle of coming to the Father and loving people on the way. And so when you read that Jesus is eating with them, you're, as, as a reader, you're supposed to go like, Oh, what is Jesus associating with, with these sinners? So, verse 3, Jesus told them this story. Here we go. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 in the wilderness and go search for the one that's lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home and on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, guys, because I found my lost sheep. Yo, I, I thought I lost them. I, I, I search everywhere. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 who are righteous in heaven straight away. And then he goes on to another story. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call on her friends and neighbors and say, what? right, same thing. Rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels even when one sinner repents. So I want to give quick observations in that story. There's two of them, right? We're going to head to our third story, which is the parable of the prodigal son. But so far, this is what we can conclude. It's in your notes. The owners love all hundred sheep and all ten coins. I want to talk to some of us who feel like Jesus only loves the one. No, he loves all hundred. So some of us feel we're in the church for a long time, and I feel like God doesn't love me as much anymore. I don't know where, where I get mole from anymore, right? But he loves all hundred sheep. He loves all ten coins. And so this story reminds us that his love for us, not whether or not we're lost or we're home or we're away, he loves all. But there's something about one that even one is missing, that I will go whatever it takes to take them home. And here's another observation. Something is lost. But the owner search until it is found. You see, he's not truly owner until he's actually searching for them. Because he's the owner, I will search. If I'm not the owner, I will not search, says God. And so you need to know when God is searching us, it's because he owns you. He made you. He created you perfectly, wonderfully, wonderfully complex. 
in your mother's womb, just as you are today, because that's who he is. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's the creator of you and me. So he owns us. In a way, he owns us. Because we've been created by him. In the last observation, before we go to the story, the owners rejoice when what was lost is found. Each time the owner finds what was lost, he rejoices. The owner, or the woman who lost the coin, she rejoices. Which means there's this pattern that the owner will take full responsibility and will do whatever it takes until you get home. Because that's who God is. He's a home bringer. He's a home welcomer. He wants to take what he owns, what he loves, who he loves back home. This is the pattern. And now when you enter a third story, can you expect anything less than this pattern? So I want to begin with that. But here we go. We're going to look, look at verse 11. What we're going to do is at each part of the story, we're going to have, make an observation. And we're going to talk about it just a little bit. And then we're going to see what are some practical things that we could do before we go home today. Verse 11, here we go. Now we're entering the story. To illustrate the point further, notice, to point further. So now, just in case you don't get the first two stories, let me give you one more. Jesus told him the story. A man had two sons. So I'm going to stop right there. First observation, guys. This is the story of two sons. A lot of times, when we read the story, we think it's just a story of one son. But when you read again in the beginning, can we go to verse, verse 11? To illustrate the point further, a man had two sons, not just one. So we will see that he, is, he has two sons. Could it be that we could learn from the other son today? I don't know. We'll see. Verse 12 to 16. The younger son told his father, this is what he said, I want to share my estate now before you die. So his, so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. Now, uh, I'm going to stop right there because here's the observation. When, when the son told his dad that I want to stick my share of my wealth, do you know what he's essentially saying? I want you to drop dead. Because this is, in any generation, in any culture, to get an inheritance, somebody needs to die. So imagine when you're, you're in the first century world, Medi Middle East, Med Mediterranean, you hear the story and you're offended. What kind of brat son will tell his dad to drop dead because I want my share of the estate? So when you read the story, you need to be offended. You need to go like, man, oh, you in trouble. Oh, snap. He's going to take out his belt and start flinging that thing like Woody in Toy Story 5. I don't know if there's a Toy Story 5 yet, but like... He's going to start whipping that thing. And, and you assume that, but the father agreed. So, so then you go, whoa, 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 what kind of dad is this? This is not a Middle Eastern dad. This is not a first century dad. Why is he not upset? But I'm going to hear the story. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to read the story about Jesus. That's a weird story. Verse 13, a few days later, the younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money. In wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. Here's another, another point I want to make, point out. The younger son thinks that the world is better than relationship with his father. This is what we find, that in the story, the younger son thinks that the world is better than relationship with his father. The son probably thinks, I don't need my dad. I'm good. I'm independent. I got this. I can do better without him. I just feel like my dad is slowing me down. I just feel like he's not letting me go. He's not letting me be me, right? I got to be me. You do you, I be me. You be, no, you, we, we just be me, right? I, I got to do me. I just, that's just the way I am, man. I'm made that way. I'm just programmed that way. I can't, I'm not like you, Dad. I don't want to own this business. I want to make my own. I want to make a name for myself. And the point is, he's, staying, he's thinking that the world that it offers, all the things that the world is saying, like fame, fortune, just prestige, honor, networking, all that good stuff is better 
than relationship with his father. And so because he saw that this was far better, I'm just going to tell him to drop dead. Can I be honest with you? When is the last time that you felt like you told God to drop dead? You told him, no, it's okay. It's all good. I got this. It's all good, God. Like, appreciate the cross. That's really nice, but I'm, I'm good. Like, I've got plans, man. I'm a man with a plan. A, a man with a plan. I mean, you ladies have plans too. Right? I mean, I got this. I, I, got, I got a whole life ahead of me. I got a lot of things ahead of me. I got this plan. I got this breakthrough. I got this, this portfolio to build. And I'm not saying portfolios are bad to build, but in expense of relationship with your father, that is when it becomes a problem. So the world, does the world have a, a good things to offer? Plenty of stuff. But can the world offer true fulfillment and security? Many would say no. So I want to pause, and I want you to think about that the youngest son thinks that the world is better than relationship with his father. Let's go on to verse 17. When he finally came to his senses, so he's just like, uh, 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 he's just like, oh, right? He came to his senses, and he said to himself, you know what, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I'm just going to go home and my father and say, Father, you know what, Dad? I sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. I'm just, just hire me as your pabantu. Hire me as your supir. Hire me as your satpam. Just hire me as a servant. Anyone, anyone in your house, just, I, I know I'm not accepted. I know I'm not worthy to be in your home, in your living room. I, I, I don't have my room anymore. You probably, like, give it away to somebody else. Just take me on. As a pabantu, someone in your house. So here's your next observation, if you, if you want to take notes. The younger son repents and returns home to his father. You see, at some point, the younger son needs to, to wake up, to get into his senses. You know, I don't know how many times I, as, as pastors, we are longing for people to just repent. And I'm not, I'm not saying just to, to change your behavior to no longer do some stuff because, you know, what is, you know, sin can be debated, smoking, drinking, whatever, those, to me those are just behaviors, right? But there's something much more than that, right? When it comes to sin, it's your heart, it's your soul, it's, 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 it's that longing, it's that feeling of like I'm being so far away from my father. But the son repents. And what does he do? He returns home. He gets back to his father. At some point, enough is enough, right? For those of us who are Christians, I really hope you remember the time when you said enough is enough. I can't do this on my own. I'm such a rack. I'm so lost. I need help. Lord, show yourself to me. I, I may not be welcome because I've messed up. I did this to my wife, my girlfriend. I did this to my husband, my, my kids. I did this to my ex. I know I'm not worthy, but can you, can, you, can you put me somewhere in the house? Can you put somewhere in the corner of, of this church? Can, you, can I just be inside what I'm hearing Pastor Don and, and Pastor Jess preach? I just want to be part of here. I'm not worthy to be among the people, but can I be in the corner somewhere listening in? Look at that heart. Look at the heart that your younger son has. And for those of us who call yourself Christians and believers of God, I want you to remember the time when you knew that you messed up so, so bad. And you felt like, oh my goodness, is there any hope for me? Is there any hope for me to get back to God? But here's, I want you to pay attention to the story. Do you notice that the son doesn't know how his dad is going to react? Do you notice that? He's like, okay, I'm just going to go back home, and then we'll see what Papi says. Like, he might be angry. He might have his belt. I have no idea. But you know what? I deserve to be whooped. I deserve to be, to be attacked by my father because I did something so unthinkable. I told him to drop dead, and I took my share of his wealth. So I want you to note that this son has no clue how his father would react. Verse 20. Let's keep going. We're almost done. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, now this is, this is where it gets beautiful. This is where it gets beautiful. 
His father saw him coming. We're going to get back to this. How did he see him coming? Does he have like CCTV? No, there was no CCTV back then. But he saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion. Filled with love and compassion. I don't don't read filled with anger and, and vice. And I don't see him with fury and wrath. He's filled with love and compassion. What does he do? He ran to his son. He embraced him. And he kissed him. We're going to get back to this. Why this is so significant. We're going to get back to this. His son said to him. So he already rehearsed, right? You, you can imagine like the son, you know, as he's walking back, he's always like rehearsing. You know, have, you, have you done that before? You rehearse? Like, dad? Oh, not dad. Oh, father. Saya minta. Oh, John, that's too easy. Like he's rehearsing on his way back. Right? He's, he's, okay, how do I tell him? How do I tell him? Should I look at him? No, should I look at him? Should I tell him? So, like, he does so, no. He's freaking out because I don't deserve anything from him. I messed up so bad. I want you to pay attention to his heart. He's saying, like, oh, goodness, I don't know what. So then, verse 21, his son said to him, after rehearsing for how many miles, how many kilometers, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you. In Asian culture, he's probably not looking. He's bowing down. It's true. Because if you look, you might get in trouble. You might actually be challenging him. So he's probably face down. He says, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you. He's probably crouching down. I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Now, I just want to point out. I want to stop real quickly. The father, if you want to take notes, the father sees the younger son and he runs to him. And not the other way around. You see, we think that we found God, but God is the one who found us. <laughs> we think somehow we discovered on Google top religions in 2022, right? You Google it, and then it's like, you know, you have all these lists, and then you have Christianity, you know? And so, so then you, oh, I found Christianity. No, God made you. He knew you come home. And he runs to you. It's not you running to him because we're too sinful. We're too messed up. We're too much of a wreck. We're too much. I, 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 I don't deserve to be in his presence. And you need to know that the one running was not you, was not me. It was our father. Our father ran to us. We're almost done. Now watch. Look what the father does. Verse 22. And you know, you, if you know the story, this is, yeah, this is very familiar. But his father said to his servants, and we're getting back right this. Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get his ring on his finger, sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we've been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party begins. I love that. The party began. The DJ came. Arnold came. You know, the party started when Arnold began to party, right? The party began, man. I mean, we got strobe lights. It was just a big party. By the way, this man, his father is filthy rich. He's crazy rich. And he's, has a, he has a ring. He has sandals. He got all these, like, nice robes, finest, probably, like, linen imported from, I don't know, Algeria. I don't know, a random country. Right? He's just showering his love on his last son because he thought he was dead. But yet he looked out and he's always looking. But he has found, so the party began. So here's another point if you want to take notes. Nothing pleases the father more than his relationship with his son. I need to say this at least one more time. Nothing pleases the father more than his relationship with his son. There is nothing that you can do to make him not love you. You may pay your cons- you may need to pay your consequences. You may have to pay for what you've done, but that does not mean the love that he has for you will ever be canceled. Nothing pleases him more than relationship. And we're going to get back to this one more time. But remember, this is a story of two 
two sons. Let's read verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working, being a good kid, right? Being a, you know, just <laughs> your kid of the year award like he won it every year. You know those trophies that they have? 2016, 2017, 2019, right? The same picture, it's him, older son, older son. You know, he's the best kid in town. Everybody knows him. What's he doing? He's working on the field because he is the son of the, the father who's probably someone rich. When he returned home, he heard music. I told you there was music. There's a DJ. He heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what's going on, man? Where all that ruckus? Your brother is back, he was told. And your father is good, the fattened calf. And he's thinking, the fattened calf? You mean the one that I was feeding? The one that I was taking care of? Well, my, I, I was taking care of that calf, and now it's been that calf? Steward? I don't know, I'm making up a name. Is there, is there a steward in the house? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Is there a steward? No, no stewards, right? I, I'll find out after service. No, not Stuart. I'm saving up Stuart for my 25th birthday. I don't know, like, for my, for my, I don't know what party he's thinking. You killed Stuart. And he's upset. He's thinking, what? And then the servant says, we are celebrating because of this safe return. You mean my chump brother? My... My titi, my ade, dengan koko kan, he's an abang kan, kakak. My titi, that chump titi, he's back. I thought I already blocked him, I already unfollowed him. Last time I saw was stories about partying in Times Beach, you know. That's where I went, that's what, that's the only thing I can think of right now. You know, all the music rock and all that same, like, woo, you know, he's partying, and, and when I saw that, I, I, I unfollowed him because I know that he took that about uh, the, the divide of the shares from his from his from my dad. He told him to drop dead, and he went and he had fun. I am here working my butt off to make sure everything's okay. You mean that chump brother came back? He showed his face, and he has the gall to come see us. That chump brother. I want you to. I want you for a second think about how upset he is, right? It's a story of two sons, not one. It's two sons. And, and, and I, want, I want us to speak for all, I wanted to speak to all of us and even to myself. What is the father's heart in this? And what kind of relationship that he wants with us? Okay, let's go to verse 28. The older brother was angry, right? Obviously, and wouldn't go in. So the party is rocking. He's not coming in. He's looking at the bouncer and he's looking, no, -uh, I ain't coming. It's like, silakan ko, silakan ko. Mm -mm, I ain't doing it. He's like, uh, ade di dalam. You know, like he's not coming in. All the servants were bringing all the, the, the wine, right? The tequila, the vodka. They're like, is that koko? Ko nga masuk? So everybody's ready to party, right? Except for the older brother. He's outside. He wouldn't go in. Because the injustice, the pain. Man, do you know how much I worked? Do you know how much I pray? Do you know how much I give? Do you know how much I serve my dad? Do you know how much I sacrifice? No one knows my dad like me. I do everything for him. He tells me to go, I go. No questions asked. And now this chump brother came home and he killed Stuart. <laughs> I want you to embrace that, that heart. Not to follow in it, but I want, I want us to feel the older brother. Like, is his justice, is his sense of justice even right? I mean, does he have the right to be upset? I mean, I don't know. But how would you feel? You've been in the house. You've been a good kid. You've been serving your 
father for years. And he never thought about doing anything wrong. You do the right things. You say the right things. And yet, when your brother comes home, your heart turns sour. So what happens? How can someone who serves and loves God so much, or loves his father so much, became so bitter when someone who was far away, who thought was dead, who thought was undeserved, finally came home, his own flesh and blood. Ito ade mo, bro. That's your flesh and blood. That's your brother. I'm so happy that Pastor Don left because he's taking care of his family. I'm happy they left. Not that I, that I wanted to leave. I wanted, I wanted to meet him. I miss Pastor Don. But I'm so glad he loves his family. He told his team, guys, you know, I don't know how long I'll be here, but I know you guys can take care of everything. I know I'm trying to love on my family. Right now they need my importance. And I know as a church, if I could speak on behalf of ICC, IFGF, that I know you guys understand that. So I want to I encourage you and say thank you. Uh, Pastor Don didn't ask me to do this, okay? There was no what, WhatsApp. Tadi Pastor Don, do, nanti kasih tau ya. Like, jangan kangen nama aku ya, you know, no. I'm just, can I speak that he thinks for his family? Because family is important. I'm not saying family is everything per se. Yes, they're important. I mean, how can you truly love them if you don't love God first? But we'll get there. The point is, can we feel his frustration? Now watch this, verse 28. His father came out. So you made your dad come out of the party. Can you imagine like when you, when you open the door? You know when you open the door, you can hear the music better? <laughs> like his dad came out of the party. It was rocking. It was like trap music and then like K-pop music. <laughs> this... I mean, it was an amazing time because we're celebrating. This is the heart of the father. But he had to come out and, and beg them. This is the father. He ran out, embarrassed himself for the one son, and he did it again. Two sons. Two sons. No man of patriarchal uh, level of honor in that age would ever find themselves begging to their son. No, that doesn't happen. Unless, if, if you're Asian, you know that doesn't happen. <laughs> Your dad will kill you. <laughs> and you know that. But this dad came out. And he says, Ko, bang, ka, tolong dong, ademu da pulang. Your brother's home. And you, being the righteous brother, the tending of the flock brother, the one who follows your dad all this time, you're like, I ain't doing that. But he replied, Right? Verse 29. What does the son say? The older son. All these years I've slayed for you. I've given you everything. I've sacrificed dating with Patricia. I don't know who's Patricia. Right? Is, it, is there Patricia? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Patricia. You're like my first random name. I'm so sorry. You know, I, I let go of her. I am... Because I want to follow you. I've slaved for you. Never once refused to do a single thing. You told me to. And all that time, you never given one young girl for a feast with my friends. You never even gave me that. Dad, what's up, man? That's not fair. Yet, when this son of yours came back, after squandering your money on prostitutes, being loud and proud on IG story, all the dumb things he'd done, Embarrassing, defaming the name of our family. Now this is Asian, right? Now it gets real. Now you may lose your business contacts because of your chump son going out. I don't know what's a place to, you know, to get yourself in trouble. You celebrate by killing the fattened calf. 
Now, I want you to pay attention. Do you remember the younger son thinks that the world is better than relationship? Let me tell you what the, the older son thinks. The older son thinks that actions are better than relationship. I want to say that again. Two sons. One son thinks that the world is far better than relationship with my dad. On the other hand, you got a son who thinks that my deeds, my actions, my pedigree, my sacrifice, my giving is more important than relationship with my father. Two sons. This is a story of two sons. Let me ask you this question. And I, I want you to be very, very honest to yourself and to God today. Which one are you? Because both sons belong to the father. Both sons have a mistaken identity. They think that there's stuff out there that are far better. And I cannot even, I cannot even tell you the stuff that the world offers. There's too many. But a lot of us, we feel like it is my amount of prayer, it is my amount of giving, my amount of ministry, my amount of stuff doing and not having relationship with my father. I'm not saying don't do stuff in the world. I love the stuff in the world. I hung out with friends for the last two days, all day, okay. Um, I got machet di Bali ternyata, tapi gak apa-apa, you know. So, but like I hang out with friends, relationships are important, but... I know that the world may never satisfy. I know that. But, and over here, we feel like, oh, I got to do more. I got to pray more. Ooh, okay, I got I to gotta do this. Okay, I got to please my dad. I got to do this. I got to pray. Oh, I got to do ministry. Oh, I got to reach out. Oh, hello. Do you know Jesus? Have you know? You know, like, you have to do work, toil. But both sons, got it wrong. They both got it wrong. Because the father does not want you to do more than you should. The father does not want you to just think about the world because the world is good stuff I've made for you to enjoy. But what I want is relationship. Relationship. This is what God wants for us. And then he says this, verse 31. His father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed with me. And everything I have is yours. We have to celebrate this happy day. For your brother was dead, has come back to life. He was lost. But now he is found. Both have mistaken identity. Just because you've been in church for a long time doesn't mean that you have relationships. And just because like, you have been away for so long, you've done some shady stuff. You've done some things that no one should know. It is embarrassing and like you, you, you wish that no one would ever talk about it. Thank God nobody knows. But you know that God your father knows. So then you're like confused. You don't know what to do. But somebody knows out there because he made you. He loves you. But he lets you go because he's not want to force you to stay home. He loves you so much he lets you go. Now, whichever you are today, whether or not you are one who's thinking that the world is better or that I have to do a lot more than I should be, either way, we need to go back home. How do we go home? How do we go home today? Another statement that I want to say, if you want it, write it on your notes. No matter what you've done, Younger son. And I think this is so prophetic. By the way, guys, I did not tell Arnold what I'm going to preach today. And yet, you already said that at the beginning. <laughs> it's in my notes here. We could have just prayed amen and plus I, after Arnold said that, you know, we could just go home. But you invited me, so I have to speak now. <laughs> but Arnold did, his, did the job. No matter what you've done, younger son, or what you've been doing, older son, your heavenly father wants relationship. I need, this is tweetable. This is a very tweetable statement. Okay. No matter what you've done, okay, 
no matter what you are doing or been doing, he wants relationship. Should you be careful what you've done? Of course, because there might be a famine. There might be stuff happening in life that you don't plan to. Should you be doing something? Of course, because if you obey my commands, you will love me and love others, of course. But those are not why he, th th those are the things that he, not, that he doesn't want from you. What he wants from you is, say with me, relationship. So here's, let me talk to the older sons. Can I talk to you? If you identify as older sons in the room, can I just talk to you for just one minute? Here's what I want you to do today. I want you to capture your father's heart. I want you to capture your father's heart. In verse 31, his father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed with me. Everything I have is yours. We have to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. Why capture his heart, older sons of ICC, IFGF? Why? Because he wants relationship with you, not just your good deeds. He wants your heart, not just your attitude. He wants to give good gifts to you, not just what you think you need. He wants to give good gifts because he wants to show you his love, not just toward outsiders. See, a lot of times we feel as older sons, it seems like it seems like God only loves those who, who just came back. That's not true. He loved all hundred sheep. He loves all hundred, uh, ten coins. He loves all of us. He really loves us. So how do you capture his heart? You capture his heart by, by knowing, by being. And just like having that relationship, you get to hear his heart. You know him deeply. You be close to him. And I wish you would go on YouTube. This is like... Iklan, yeah. Iklan for your, for your church. <laughs> Go on YouTube. Pastor Jess gave an amazing message about, about, um, about John 15. True vine and the true branches. And he's talking about, she was talking about being in him. Being is more important than doing. From being, you do. A lot of us, we do because, so that we can become but that's what the world says. The world says do more, pray more, lift up more, you know, do stuff more, so then you become. But no, 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 no. The gospel is become a child. Go home. Come back to your father, for you are a child. And then you do. Your doing is no longer about you. Your doing is about me. Become. So older sons in the room, can I talk to you? Do not go home until you capture his heart. Do not go home until you understand that he wants to have a relationship with you. And it's not about doing. It's about you. He loves you. He wants you. Not your prayer. Not your doing. Not your sacrifice. Not your giving. Not the stuff that you do for him. He loves that stuff, but not in the expense of your relationship. Older sons, capture his heart. But now... What if today you still haven't come home to your creator and father in heaven? Can I, can I ask for the worship team? Uh, yeah. Or maybe, maybe just keyboard is going to see. I just want us to, to just sing very briefly. I want us to take time, just a few minutes. It's not enough that we understand cognitively, right, in your mind that yes, God is a good father. But some of us, we are so hurt, right? We're so hurt that, man, all that sacrifice for nothing? No, that's not true, right? Or can I talk to those who feel unworthy today? Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you if you feel like you've made too many mistakes? Right, there's no hope for you. Can I talk to you that maybe you feel like there's no point in coming to God? I want to go home, but like, what's the point? I don't understand why. Maybe you feel that your heavenly father would never take you home, right? Just like the younger son, and he's walking home. He doesn't know his dad's going to accept him. He's like, okay, what should I do? Okay, dad, um, uh, 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 father, I have sinned against you. And he, did, he didn't know. And some of you, maybe you don't know 
that God wants to have that relationship with you. Maybe you feel that God gave, maybe you did give God a chance, but he wasn't there. <laughs> Is that true? Pastor Ardo, you don't know. Once I prayed, I prayed, and like God didn't show up. I, I genuinely prayed. So he didn't show up. So how do I know he's going to be there for me this time? Listen, I, I, can't, I can't address everything. I can't address maybe you fell away from the church because people disappointed you, right? That pastor said this. That church leader said that. That statement from them, right? It hurt you. So you're like, no, wait a minute. Nuh-uh. I'm going back to the world. It's safer out here. It's nicer here. So I can't answer every single problem. I only got a few more minutes left today. But I could promise you this. If you're willing to be captured by your father's heart, you will never be the same. Did you catch that? Older sons, capture your father's heart. But if you feel like you're a younger son away from him, be captured by your father's heart. Be captured. Older sons have their own issues. Just let them be. You know, be nice, right? But if you're a younger son and you feel like, man, I can't go home. I don't deserve this. And can I be honest with you? As a previous younger son, I never thought I could deserve any of this. To be standing before you, to serve God since 2011. I moved to Malang in 2008 because I believe God has a calling in my life, not because I'm more special than you, because he has a calling in all of our lives. But I take the, the crazy step to, to follow God. I went to Bible school. In fact, two of my friends are here from Bible school, Pusuka and Ingress. They've, they've been supporting me since then. Do you think that I deserve to be here? If I have more time, I could tell you about my past, and it not, it's not pretty. The fact that I have two kids, God is not fair. Did you catch that? God is not fair because he gave me two kids. If you know my story, he's not supposed to give me two kids. And yet here I am. So let me talk to you as a younger son. I know it's scary. And I know you feel like, why bother? But I want you, please, if there's any one thing you should do, maybe not today, maybe next week, maybe when you join small groups. He's in the number of connect groups. He's you, friend. Maybe this week, this is the first time you'll join a connect group. And I encourage you to join a connect group today and talk about how tough it is to go back home. Because I don't get it. It's so hard for me. Emotionally, I'm not ready. Mentally, I'm ready. But emotionally, be captured. Know that he truly loves us. He truly loves you. He's such a great father. He's such a great friend because he's a savior that died on the cross for you and for me. So can I ask everybody to stand and then and we're going to have communion afterwards too. So get your communion ready. Can we, can I read to you Romans 5, 8? For God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. I'm going to read.